guys and welcome to Angling For You and today you join me at Nether Mill Fishery which is around the Barnsley area. It's beautiful in the countryside, just stunning, lily pads, flowers, grass everywhere. What's better than that when you're fishing? Um, today I've only ever fished it once. I fished it in the winter, completely different outlay on what it looked like. Um, and I'm going to try something that I don't normally do um, and I know it's what a lot of people do do um, and that's use additives so I thought today let's see on a venue that's not a commercial venue how those additives will work so the base of today I'm a little bit so new baity um, well we've got a blender stuff today we've got a super crush which is a so new bait super crush it's a, ca a super carp um, method mix and the good thing about these uh, is they tell you method cage or pole float so if you over wetted it down the edge if you want it in a cage slightly lighter and uh, you could do and then if you want to put it in a method like we're going to do today we're going to soak it um, and make it into the normal texture which we'll go through there are particles in we are going to um, sieve them out but just to get the moisture evenly distributed then we'll add the particles back in um, so don't say to me oh it's got particles in why would you use that one that's why so when we've done that and we'll go into close uh, to this when we're on the box and stuff like that we've got some ringers boily crush now this is something that I've never really used I'm gonna give it a go give it a little bit of enhancement I'm gonna fold some through the ground bait as we go through we've got pellets we've got hemp as well to put through it potentially that might leave that until later on if we fish down the margin so we have got this um, as one of the options <clears throat> the other one is a goo now this one is outrageous orange smoke now it is the thicker and again we're going close the, they do a thinner and as you can see uh, hopefully it is quite a thick one this it smells tremendous so this is what we're going to put on the outside of the feeder before we cast it out it's for a little bit more attraction and then there's a hook, one of the up baits we've got pellets um and we've got potentially maggots but we've got some ringers and this is just a selection of pinks yellows oranges and whites now for me they're a good all-rounder having a wafter they imitate colors of different baits and they're just easy to hook easy to fish with and people catch a lot of fish throughout the whole country doing it so what we're going to do first is mix this ground bait then we'll let it settle we'll come back and finish it off and then we'll get on the box and hopefully get in some fish so <clears throat> it is a big old bag we don't need all this bag uh, so if you're not using it make sure you have a bring a clip or something like that um that you like a sandwich bag, bag clip or whatever to try and keep your bait sorted so it's quite a dark mix this one um but it's it's gonna go about half a bag so half a bag we've got two of us here might be all right and we can always make some Oh, it does smell nice but don't know if I can see it but there is an absolute ton of particles in it the high fish meal base and I think it'll be a really good attractor um, I'm hoping it will be today and we're just going to start with adding a little bit of water I always go with a little bit at a time now a big, the, big, the bigger the bowl the easier it is to mix it's as simple as that if you've got smaller bowls and you've got square tubs it's going to be more difficult to mix you can pick up these um, bowl sets from various manufacturers um, in various different colours I've got so many different of these bowls at home but this one came in a set probably about 30 quid or so and it comes with a bowl the bowl that sits inside it and the riddle you can also get the attachment to fit it on the side of your box as well um, which i used to used to do now it's coming together it still feels a bit oaty what i mean by oaty if you've ever got sort of a granola bar and it's quite textured that's similar to what that feels like so we're going to slightly overweight it normally than what we what we would because we're going to leave it for 15 minutes while we get the old feeder rod done before we put any more water in to bring it to perfect consistency and then we're going to obviously riddle it so now that is overwetted breaks down but like i said we're going to be coming back 
and adding a bit more water to it and riddling it off. So let's, magic of editing, cut to that. Right boys, so you can see that we've dried out a little bit now. It's a, a little bit dustier, a little bit drier, as you can see. And that's primarily because of the, the particles soaking all that stuff up. There's loads of stuff in here, seeds, all sorts of stuff. So I'm gonna just add a little, and it won't take a lot of water to bring it back. You don't want it too wet, otherwise it won't come off your feeder. And you'll have a ball lake there. We're using a, a, a Jura Banjo today. One of the sort of new style ones, like I say, we'll, we'll go into that when we, when we get on the box. That's what you want, you want it to come together. Let's riddle it first and see how those particles come out of it. So this is why <clears throat> we get these, we can just put those straight on top. But what I suggest is you do it in a, in a couple of parts, it stops you from getting it all over the floor and, and everything else. Just gently work your hand around, the, the riddle is shaped for, for moving your arm around it in perfect sort of direction. The particles are not too big, so the, most of them, like the corn and maize and things like that, will go through the riddle, which is helpful. Just about get the rest of that in there. You can pick it up and shake it as well, when, if you get a little fuller. We, like I said, we haven't done mega capacity today. Um, we, we'll probably film in a multitude of of different episodes, potentially. Um, so, so I was swapping and chopping, as I normally do. And you see, in this bit here, we've got all the, the wetter particles. And this is where you spend your time to get the right texture and the right finish to your ground bait. And what you wanna do is nearly get all that ground bait through because that's where the wet pieces are and then we can put the particles back in knowing that we're all right you can see there still is plenty of particles in there look we've got the majority of the particles but we left the the bits of ground bait that are too wet and just leave it on the side and then we're left with the ground bait now it is so fluffy you can compress it, it's not gonna it's gonna come off the feeder, it's not gonna stay on there all day long and it's ready to rock and roll. And what we'll do is we'll start fishing, we'll hopefully get some fish going, and then we'll see some catching and then we'll have a look at the rigging close, loading, and when we add the boiler crush as well. In fact, actually, what we'll do is we'll flip to adding the boiler crush um, and just show you that in a little bit more detail first um, because I'm gonna put it through it rather than coating it on the outside of a mould. Um, but we'll go into that. Right boys, boil it, crush. So I've got the orange, I think it's pink, there's yellow, there's all sorts. But these are a little bit like your mini boilies or your mini wafter kind of flavour colouring. And it just adds a little bit of jazziness to your mate mix. It breaks up, it's there, it's, it's not really feed but it's attractive. That's the idea. Now, there's two ways of doing this. You can add some of this to, to the ground bait like we're gonna do, because I don't really use a mold. I tend to just do it in my hand. But if you are doing it in a mold, you can sprinkle this in the mold and put it in and you know, you, you, you're straight away. So the crush itself, as you can imagine, I'm gonna bring this up to camera actually. It is exactly what it says it is, a crush. What we're gonna do is not go crazy with it. We're gonna go two little our fan folds. And there's two reasons why we do that. One, we want it to be a little bit of an attractor. We don't want it to be the main thing. But two, it costs $5.99 for an individual thing. So you better believe if it works <laughs> that you were to do. Now, another thing, I was talking to Sam, in fact, we just put a little one half an handful in. Um, I was talking to Sam about this at Fishing Tackle yesterday, and what he says is he, he uh, sieves it like a kitchen sieve, because he likes the finer particles in there, uh, which I think is a really good idea. So the chunky ones you can maybe do for down the edge, um, or sometimes he likes the finer particles if he's mixing it with his pellets. So what we're doing with ground bait today, and I'm not too fussed about the bigger particles, because we've got 
um, bits of seed and things like that and we're gonna put a bit of hemp in as well um, so I'm not as fussed but if you are going to put it in pellets and it is a good idea to to sieve it away and uh, see how you get on so let's jump on a box and let's hopefully bend into some fish Hi guys, straight in, I cast that in and as soon as that hit the water, that went round. So, maybe that's a spawn or maybe that's a little bit of uh, how good the additive is. <laughs> Literally hit the water and went straight round. Second after it hit the water, it went and it's a mini barbel. Oh, that's a nice start. We'll set that all day. Barbel on order. Right guys, that is a great start. Did not expect to start that fast. And I certainly didn't expect to catch what I've caught. Which is a small barbel. That is superb. If he's gonna stay still, we'll hold him up for you. Look at that. Perfect start. Beautiful little babble. Let's get him back in. Get my camera in that, boys. I didn't even have time to even sink my line. That went that fast. <laughs> I'll be honest, I did not expect that. And then we're going to close it, show this a bit close. But what I'm doing is putting in a first layer, dropping in the bandom few little layers on top and just gently compress that and then I'm getting it in my hand and that w w what is your mold if you're using your mold and I put that around the mold like so Let's give it a little squeeze move it out of the way brush the old hands off and a little bit of this goo only a little drop because it's strong stuff and literally as that hit the water that barbel took that I mean that was crazy not looking like that's going to be every time, but that was crazy. As soon as it hit the water. Like I always say, nice and low. Nice and low to the water. Got your eye nicely fastened behind a mould and everything in line ready to pick up. Now well, what I will say is I've slightly tightened the drag um, just because of where you can potentially run to. But um, yeah that was surprised me actually. Thought I'd hook something under water, it went round that fast. But it's a lovely mix is this mix loads of particles in it and i've just added a little bit more hemp to it a little yellow wafter and in touches which means there's fish around the bait so attractive and getting so many liners the, the attractiveness of, of those particles and the goo and even those little lava rocks little boil, crush boiler just bringing the fish into the peg straight away it must be such an, an attractive mixture and I'm not going to leave this in long I'm giving it a minute and a half two minutes tops this is only a small feeder and I want it's warm, it's being warm. We'll introduce some. There we go, boys. All over that as soon as it hits the water. Like a little F1 or something, a little fish. Good thing today is it's going to be catching anything that swims. 
which is my kind of day. Looks like it's not going to the right as well. F1, beautiful, beautiful little fish. Let's get him back, and while they're still back, and let's, uh, let's keep going. Have you seen that? The swirling over the top of it. Look. Oh my god. Oh my god, boys. They're literally swirling over the top of it. Top of the ground bit. <laughs> I took that on the drop as soon as it hit the water. Could do with the floating feeder today. We'll be making a killing on these F1s. A little bit for a little F1. Looked absolutely perfect. And that was literally ridiculous. As soon as it hit the water, that fish were there ready for it. It were uh, almost got shallow. I didn't even bother tightening up, I just waited for it to go round. And that just shows how uh, attractive this ground bait is. It's uh, high, high attraction, especially with all this crushing stuff in. So much so that <laughs> that fish wanted it before it even got to the bottom. Take it back in, see if there's some more. I'm sure there is. Yellow wafter seems to be doing the trick to start off. Oh, we're in again, boys. We're in again. And I reckon that's going to be another F1. This is great. Happy to, to catch like this all day. We're going to be in like this. And perfect. It's going to be too windy to hold the polar distance. It's probably going to be too uh, too windy to control a waggler. So if you're catching them on the method, then why not enjoy it? We'll have one more fish, and then we'll have a look at the loading, um, and we'll have a look at the setup. Come on, everyone, there right, you go. Now I will say, always remember when you. You're loading and you're getting your, your feeder that you make sure you're not wrapped over the top of uh, the feeder of the uh, the actual rod itself because that can be nasty either for cracking that off or losing an eye and you don't want to do either of them trust me so always the first check before you cast out that everything's in line A little gas down there, and you can get away with the sw it's swirling for it now. The swirling for it, so this is going to go round as soon as we tighten it up. I would have thought the swirling for that bait as it went in. Absolute craziness. F1 maniacs there. Guys, turn the lump. A little left one, right? Get this one in. Oh, it's like maybe a small little gap. It could be an F1. Let's have a look. There we go. A little bit 
bit bigger this one. Lovely fish. Bit of a junkier F1. Let's get back in and let's have a look at close at the rig. Hi guys, let's have a look at the kit. So we've got a Daiwa AZ AGS uh, 10 foot, a bit long for what we need here, but if you do walk into some bigger carp, that's my thought process. Um, a little bit more backbone. Um, we have got a 3000 TDR reel with five pound Maxima line on. My go to um, from way 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 back from when we first started fishing um we've got a jira banjo feeder now i've got the old so it's an ics inline banjo xr feeder and this one is a 20 i think it's, it's a small 20 grammer yeah oh sorry a medium 20 grammer and that's perfect for this kind of chuck you don't want anything heavier than that we're going straight out to that corner of that island um and yeah, we, we, we've, we've been catching on yellow bandoms. Uh, I'm going to try a white um, or an, an or orange because Matt's doing well on those as well, just to see how they go. What we'll do is I'll zoom it up uh, into my hands and we'll talk through how we load it and then we'll go back out and cast to see if we have some more fish. Right guys, so you can see everything in front of me. Uh, what we're going to do first is get the hook bait on. Now, the hook, the line itself is Power Micron Matrix Line uh, 016 to a size 16 um, midi uh, feeder hook. Really nice and simple. Got about three inches there. Now, like I said, you can use a mould. I tend not to do that. So I, I sort of load it like that. Now, you can have the, the bait on the outside. I like to put it under the in the middle skin the reason being is when you get it down i want it to be sat fully on that without the top layer may come off and on the landing um or it may uh, on the way down and i want to make sure that, that that is fully fully down to the bottom so create a pile and just like you do on your normal feeder mold push it on you can break off the excess and there you go you've got a lovely um cupped bit of ground bait you can just cut that round your hand to make sure that it's on perfect and then we've got the flavor goo like i said outrageous orange smoke give it a little short shake and we can just do one line or you can do a dot whatever you feel you want to do and there it is that's ready to go ready to cast let's get back on the box and let's cast her in Again, not too long from being in that cast. There's so many of these, these F1s. Good little fun. Little white wafter just in the inside of the mouth. Lovely little fish to uh, end the video on. Let's put him back. Right guys, so hopefully it's been helpful to you. And uh, just like I say, it's, it's all about the confidence. If you feel confident with a certain bait, you know, you'll catch on it. And you know, that's what it's about, experimentation. There's no right, well there's clearly right or wrongs. But no one should have to tell you if you can't try this or you can't try that. Don't be scared of it. Obviously, I used the, the beat reel. I got so much ammo from that. I had some phenomenal days on it. And the right time of year and the right settings. It's just superb. So, you know, don't let people talk you off from it. If you want to watch any of other, other videos or anything like this, then go on to Angling uh, for you uh, YouTube on their uh, on our 
playlists because we've got absolutely tons of stuff on there and I put them into specific playlists to show you um, how easy it is to find things that you uh, you want to watch and if you want to go on the Angling For You Facebook group uh, uh, Angling For You um, there is 9,000 9, people on there members day share your pictures your photos your videos ask questions um, there's an Angling For You buy and sell as well and if you want to join us on Instagram it's angling underscore for you and just share those pictures if you could like share and subscribe that would be superb and until the next one guys thank you very much for watching Tight lines.